Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Rise of the Robots campaign. It is time for us to uh, face our next challenge. Today we're having a set of guerrilla ops missions. Mind you, we do have an ongoing dark event that um, ensures that there will be reinforcements. So the difficult mission will be even more difficult. The reason why I finally decided to go with Operation Godfist here is because I think that the engineer is more valuable than the other two options. I think I can still deal with the overall timer. I've just uh, mm, let a bit more time pass, so I scanned a tiny bit just to get six intel and also finish the blue screen rounds, which means we're fighting against Advent only. But we do have blue screen rounds finished, so flying over there. Need to make sure that we're not tapping out because if you're doing the, uh, what I've just done, which is just letting the time pass, uh, at the moment that you're clicking on the mission, um, the Sky Ranger will travel there even if the mission is quote, quote unquote already over. Uh, the time that uh, the that you begin traveling is what counts. So, as for build items, which is the only thing that we can do, still can't do the spark upgrade, which is a shame. We don't need any of these, not yet. And we could theoretically get a second mimic beacon for a hundred. Uh, very much a no-brainer and we can get a bit of blue screen rounds which might be also a no-brainer and another mind shield yeah let's get another mind shield And two blue screen rounds that leaves us with 300 supplies that's fair and we got a solid well-rounded equipment here giving hogbite a mine shield we got one mimic beacon here we got another mimic beacon over here Russ takes the blue screen rounds. Mm, what else do we need? I like the idea of a battle scanner. We do not need uh, the skull jack yet because I would rather want the major breakthrough to a cure first and then we're school jacking to get back so yeah two times two times um, a mimic beacon that's fine that's for scouting purpose i don't know if we need a mind shield on him or if we're instead going for a better ammunition we know it's advent only so might as well go for a mind shield just in case of the priests we know there are no there should be no well hmm, i shouldn't say that maybe advent um, deployed a couple of mechs but yeah there won't be any non-advents like vipers for instance okay cool let's jump right into it going to be a very interesting mission all right we have landed let's take a look we landed pretty much in the corner and we gotta get to the detonator that's fine let's start doing that spark tries to scout out whether or not someone is near Very nice. We already know that one patrol is down there. No need to ask 
that the M moves in. Hopbyt moves in. Rust begins to move in. Halo uh, begins to move in. And everybody did a double move. So that's a neat startup. Those three are an easy snack to begin with. Good. How about we're doing kind of that classical Overwatch situation? Where we're taking one, two people on Overwatch, and let's just use Russ here. Really want to kill that Advent Officer first. The Overwatch shots will not crit, but they will also not incur any penalty. So he might take some good amount of damage with that. That's one down and one heavily injured. <laughs> Unlucky for him. We are already waiting on the rooftop. Right. That is too bad for him. Got a nice little flanking shot bonus and we're feeding the kills of course to the ones that need them in order to level up. Repairing. Moving, out. Moving up. And one overwatch. Probably going to see... Yeah. The Chosen. Oh, this time the Warlock. That is interesting. Okay, so... Can summon robotic allies. Well, good for us. We do have um, blue screen rounds with us. Overwatches upon ending the turn. Does not trigger overwatch. Uh, that is okay. We can live with it. Easy to target from high ground and advis advisory uh, reapers, so that's fine. We're probably going to see some of his nasty zombies that he's going to summon. The elders must have caught wind of our operation. They sent in one of the chosen. We should try to track that thing down and so we know there is another pack up here, trouble. right? The right. Judgment is nearly upon you. Let's continue just blue moving for now. Okay, Hogbite. Hogbite blue moves and picks up that extra focus. If he does not trigger anything, we should be fine. That's good. Move into here. Sir Templar. 
So all of this will not trigger anything. Just a matter of positioning now. And the DM also moves up here. I will opt to reload because we do have overdrive. I want to maybe use that next turn. There are the dreaded spectral zombies. Probably should have overwatched. Effing spectral rupture. Gotta hate that. Okay. Moving up, even if that means that we're triggering, because we got to speed up. Tower is pretty nasty. A lot of hit points. So, hmm. I'm on the move. Yeah, we're going to keep the teamwork as an option. First things first. Moving further away so that we're not taking any damage. Still using the high ground, of course. Overdrive. 246, that's a kill. Alright, 241 are down. And with this, we could theoretically take out the tower immediately. Probably can take out both of the towers, but this one here would go. Okay. Now, threat assessment. We got two advanced troopers. Both of them are dangerous. I would say, who has the blue screen rounds? Yeah, we got blue screen rounds here which would make this here almost a no-brainer. Nearly killed it. That's fine. Mimic beacon if needed. Another mimic beacon if needed. We do have a normal magnetic rifle. Okay, cool. Good, let's hit this guy. That's one down. One. Well, may I say This here would be a good, a pretty good hit. And it would explode the car on top of it. This would also be a decent hit. This here would be a good hit, explode the car, deal damage to him, remove the cover. Hmm. I generally like the idea of this one here. 
Right, probably this one because Hawkbite can move in and kill him. So yeah. That's a removal of the cover. That's the good old 90% shot that you do not want to miss. This here will be for the Mimic Beacon because I think we can't get them all down. Go in. Nice. That was a very decent crit. Cut a hair trigger. And that's the extra tower that we were thinking about. Hmm. You know what, just for the peace of mind, because we do have two Mimic Beacons, how about we're doing this here? And we're parrying. Uh, there are the ensured reinforcements. Two, four, six, eight, nine. That's not a hundred percent kill. But on the other hand, there is no ensured other kill that he could reach. So might as well amplify the damage on him. And there is it. There it is. Very good. Cut this guy down. Moving up. So we are in the need of shredding. So let's start with that. By the way, you can already see again just how many rolls the uh, the mech can actually take. So we got some more blue screen rounds. Don't like standing in the open, but there are not that many alternatives. Roger that. Normally you wouldn't do that, but that's the only other blue screen rounds that we do have course we're missing now we got to fully commit which I hate to do running out of time and I cannot allow the tower to continue applying so much pressure to our position Mimic beacon as the last resort if everything else fails the M moves over Take a shot. I K 
cannot believe that that is happening. Okay, come on. We're going to be a little bit risky here. Thank you. I wanted to keep the Mimic Beacon just in case we're running through another difficult encounter. And with like four 65 plus percent shots, the odds of it hitting it once were incredibly high. Alright. Good, here we go again. I need a short break. So we got only two more rounds, which means our uh, mech is most likely going to just move in so that we can hack next turn. We got a couple of nice positions where we can flank and we should use them. Russ here is taking that 100% shot. Okay, so... Even though this here has no cover, Still okay taking the position just because it flanks so nicely. Gotcha. Need to reload. Finally, let's give Hawkbite a couple more kills. And we're moving further in. Still got that Mimic Beacon just in case. Moving the rest of the team closer. Over here to the high ground. Overwatch and reload. Good, let's take a good look. It's zombie time. Still going to be a spectral rupture. That's what I hate about zombies. If only one of them survives, it just begins to suck. Good. Let's make sure that we can hack. Again, you can see the spark has done all of uh, the dirty work. I would love to get that lead on the facility. Oh, 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 so close, but yet so far. Good. Let's give our spark the kill. Good. The warlock is edgy as always. When you listen to him, he just doesn't take a joke very well. Russ reloads, thanks to autoloader he can even overwatch and so now overwatches as well. And that's where the captain heroically just charges in in order to be shortly afterwards just obliterated.
Good, let's take a look behind the curtain here. Still not at the position of the warlock. Okay, two will take the lower ground. And two will take the higher ground. The mech finally can take high ground and we probably should reload. Very soon overdrive is ready. Overwatch. Reload and let's just use our Battle scanner to find where the warlock is currently located. Perfect. Shifting a bit over here. The warlock, sh the warlock should engage with us now. to the very edge he's talking way too much but then again that's a trade of all of the chosen they always give you the boss level talk indicate he's nearly as dangerous as they are when it comes to psionic capability as far as my reports indicate he's a bitch Moving up. he cannot come onto this side <clears throat> and we need to shred him really well that's for starters eat this All right, we're just going to move up. Got a nice mimic beacon if needed for now. Let's overdrive because it's time to give the warlock a little bit harder time. He's easily hittable from high ground, which is why he does not want you to be on high ground. He is now also fully shredded. Should have, by the way, amplified beforehand. That was a little mistake. Not the end of the world now, but still could have been a bit better. Nice simplified damage. And there we go. Got that extra focus back. He decides to summon Max. That's okay. And he's probably using a mind spin. Hopefully on our Templar. Oh, come on. He's scared of his life, so he's summoning the Spectral Army. Blue screen rounds. We have blue screen rounds up here. No, we don't.
We have blue screen rounds? Yes, we do. Thank you. This here would be a kill if we would hit. Alright, more blue screen rounds. Good. Moving up. This here might be a kill. Again, moving up very, very closely. That's another kill. Good job. And now that he is damageable again how about taking a big fat uh psionic claw to the face lovely love lee certainly got what he was asking for Very nice. That was a good mission overall. Good. Let's take a look. I want a promotion. At least one. Come on. Oh yeah, the spark is promoted. Perfect. Very nice. Good. So next up after Adaptive Aim and Bulwark, whereas Bulwark would have been really a good option as well, we got Rainmaker, equipped heavy weapons deal two additional points of damage and have an increased area of effect. I love that because it will usually give you more cover removal. And the other alternative is the Strike, which isn't bad either, it's uh, reusable. And I found myself very often uh, to effectively want to go up to an enemy and just punch him in the face. It's very rewarding. In this particular run, where cover removal is a weakness of ours, uh, we only have yeah, psionically active characters and the only cover removal either comes from grenades or really from heavy weapons, we're going to take Rainmaker. The two extra damage is icing on the cake, um, but the rest is good, just by itself. Advanced stock, wonderful, got another advanced perception, that is good as well. So we are lucky when it comes to all of the PCSs, and that extra engineer certainly is helpful as well, because now we can continue that excavation here. Okay, I should click the open one. Thank you. Good job, Saiken. We're down to 20 days and that is somewhat acceptable. Now, soon we, when we will expand the Psy Lab, we will definitely need a bit more than that. Two more days until we can get 50 supplies from the resistance uh, ring. And yeah, there are more supplies that we currently definitely not need. We want to make contact. Oh, we don't have uh, we don't have enough contacts. I, I just realized that. Okay, we still got we still got our school jack, so it's not the end of the world. Let me think. I am contemplating whether or not we need the resistance ring at this point. Or if we can wait 23 more days until we then start getting more contacts. Hmm. It's 
a difficult decision. We already have a resistance order that gives us this one extra contact, so by demolishing it we would be in the reds as it stands. Hmm. I would like to have a strategic resource with plus one contact, but that is rare. Usually you're not getting it. Not that easy. So yeah, we definitely got the ability to in the intel to go there. But we do not have the number of contacts. That's a problem. Okay, how do we want to deal with that? I think we're continuing to... Maybe gain some more intel. And just wait until the technical advances. Like I said, we still have one more ace up our sleeves. All right, back. I needed to answer the door. So our covert option, covert operation report finally reduced the digital network. And let's see what else we can take. Soldier Bond is really nice. We now got a Sergeant Plus. Who would that be? Oh, Hogbite is available for such a mission. Mm -mm. Found a chosen ability. Got you. Hmm. You know, starting to just gain a bit more influence would be absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> I'm asking myself the question whether we should put Hogbite onto it or just wait for now because we're, let's take a look, we're 10 days prior to the supply drop, okay? So, if we were to take a mission for 12 days, that'll mean at the beginning of next month, whatever we would be doing essentially would be over. On the other hand, if we speed it up, then that's only seven days. Hmm. Still a chance for an ambush, but that's only extra XP for Hogbite. It's a difficult choice because Going into a mission without him kind of exposes us. At the other side of the spectrum, these covert actions are really leading nowhere. And if we deepen the Templar um, connection, we could get a second Templar now that Hogbite is high enough to actually do that. So we can't put a spark onto the, uh, the whole mission. But we could take two soldiers and just edit the weapons that they're having. Now nah, we don't need the school jack. Might get a mind shield, that's okay. Let's give him that extra weapon. Yeah, we should be fine with three of them if we're actually running into an ambush. That should not be the end of the world. And we can speed this up. It won't be seven days, it will be 10 most likely. But that's okay for me. And if we play our cards right, we might <coughs> even get this here before the end of the month. So yet again, a bit of reshuffling of resources. We're freeing up 
this year. Um, probably for one core we can go with an experimental heavy weapon. Could be something good. Uh, the plasma grenades would be fantastic as well. And like I said, sparks are also good. <clears throat> but we can always build them immediately and kind of um, expedite it. Like I mentioned, we're emptying this. And instead, let's speed up this mission. So 10 days, expanding our queue. It's not 100% sure what will happen first, the supply drop or the covert action. I suppose the supply drop, but it's not the end of the world. Either way is fine. Either way is fine. In term of, uh, terms of upgrades, we can now upgrade this for 50. It has the exact same requirements energy-wise. Yeah, well, great. So that was not the best reward for a resistance ring mission ever. We essentially got 50 supplies out of it. Fair enough. And we're now at 28 power. So that's pretty much putting it to the absolute maximum. <clears throat> we got to get that contact here. So what else can we do? We want to get intel. Don't need a soldier. Don't really need supplies at this point. Don't need to heal faster. I wish we Avenger would have an extra um, contact because that would help us a lot. Or another way to reduce the Avatar project. That's the biggest threat, threat of this campaign, the Avatar project. Uh. Okay, we're having a problem. Elders never had any issues targeting civilians, and their chosen are no different. The resistance is counting on us. The next people. mission that we are doing needs to be one with the school check. Improved magnetic weapons is fantastic. Plus one damage. Resistance um, ring costs are reduced for 50%. We do not need these weapons really. Only thing that we could use is the grenade and that's pretty much it. So mm, let's go for the alien encryption. It'll offer us an option to build the shadow chamber and that again will offer us more options to reduce the avatar progress. All right, that's a pretty damn good option for us to make progress. The losses and <clears throat> a supply rate indicate that we're in for a uh, smash and grab mission. And it also indicates that there is probably advent going to be he uh, there that in return will help us to hopefully um, use the school check. The only problem that I'm now seeing is since I let the major breakthrough go through, when we're now school checking someone, that could mean shortly afterwards the major breakthrough dark event happens and we're right back to the maximum and then there is no more second chance. So this run might have a problem with uh, the avatar timer simply because I can not reliably do the covert ops missions and there were a couple of just unfortunate events back to back plus the build order with the lab, spa uh, lab run uh, rush had the disadvantage of really not leaving much room for anything. So technically, we could get rid of uh, the resistance ring. That, however, would reduce our contacts even further. And then we build additional contacts. The Reapers have no oh, we're waiting 17 days in order to do that, which is probably the more greedy play. Alien. 
principle. What people yeah. choose to do with their lives beyond that point is... Can't get rid of the guerrilla tactics school. The Psy Lab would be suicidal to get rid of that now. We finally are getting better operatives. And yeah, we're... See, the Psy Lab creates so much stress on your engineers and the excavation that everything else falls a bit behind. So that 50% excavation speed improvement, we definitely should get that back just so that we speed up just clearing the alien machinery over and over and building new buildings. The next one definitely needs to be the resistance ring for, not the resistance ring, um, the communication central so that we can get more contacts to other regions. Now, it's um, looking tough guys, but we're eventually going to get through it. If you enjoy the content, please feel free to hit a like and uh, subscribe slash comment. That would mean a lot to me. So see you on the next round and take care. Bye bye.